I acknowledge the Boonwurrung people of the Kulin Nation as the traditional owners on whose unceded lands I currently live and work, and respectfully recognise elders, past, present and emerging. Hi, I'm Dr. Innocent and I'm going to be talking with you today about the process of making a citywide AR game about Melbourne called 64 Ways of Being. It's a game about Melbourne that's played in the city itself, but not so much this view of the city, but rather here in the lived experience of the city. It looks at the ways in which the design of our cities, both deliberate and accidental, offers opportunities and also challenges for situating play within the street itself. Ultimately, it's a game about the experience of place. But first I'll give you a bit of background about myself. Uh, my name is Troy Innocent. I'm an urban play scholar and artist game maker. Uh, over the past 10 years, my work has been situated largely within a public art practice. But looking at the connections between that or the intersection between that and game development, particularly location-based games or pervasive game design. So ultimately working within the space of what uh, some people call playable cities. So partly my response to, to this practice or is, is, is through the creation of a free app called 64 Ways of Being, which is about as I was saying before, the experience of place or kind of creating an experience from place, creating a play experience from place. Uh, this work is also situated in a larger project called Playable City Melbourne, in which, uh, uh, which is supported through a VC senior research fellowship at RMIT University. So what is a playable city? Here's an example of a playable city project. This is something I made two years ago in relation to, in collaboration with uh, the Melbourne International Arts Festival. In this case, uh, working with their art trams program to create a playable art tram. So in this case, the visual artwork, which has been situated on the uh, side of a C2 class Melbourne tram becomes a 32.5 meter long musical score. And when viewed through a mobile phone app, the movement of the tram as it, as it kind of moves through the city uh, uh, generates a musical score. So the work is called Accelerando because the speed of the tram with it slowing down, speeding up, uh, uh, coming to a stop, whatever it might be, um, generates a different uh, a set of musical notes and tones and rhythms. So here's an example of taking something that's familiar in every day, uh, a Melbourne tram, and turning it into something that's playable. So playable cities are really about urban play and 64 ways of being is exploring the possibilities of urban play through augmented reality. So what is urban play? Urban play is free analog play. It's play with technology. It's mobile play. It's play with infrastructure, play with location and play with strangers and playing with the city as a material. I'll start by talking about urban play and augmented reality. What really interests me about AR is the idea of working with the city as a material, using the mobile phone to shape and reframe the city to the player. Not only working with AR as a visual layer on top of the city, but also to change the player's perception and experience of the city itself. Let's look at some different examples of how play shapes public space. First up is an artwork called One Easy Step that really doesn't use any technology at all. It uses elements of the urban environment, such as street markings and small installations, to reconfigure people's experience of place. People playfully navigate a maze, then come together to play simple games installed in the space. It is free, open play. This is in direct contrast to a game like Pokemon Go, which is heavily screen-based. It takes the cosmology of pocket monsters, the Pokemon, and distributes them across multiple cities around the world. However, the experience of each city is very similar because the game imposes its own codes onto the world through the Nintendo Pokemon brand. The player's experience of place is diminished because largely they are looking at a phone screen that is disconnected from the world around them. 
Herb Animals is a playable city project released around the same time as Pokemon Go that takes a very different approach. It also situates people in relation to creatures in the street, but instead of a screen, uses projection and motion tracking to create a more embodied form of interaction. Of course, the limitation with this is that it's site-specific, but that is also its strength. Shadowing is another playable city project based on a simple intervention. It replaces a street lamp with a projector and camera that records and plays back the movement of people that walk underneath, with a short time delay. Through this process, different patterns of movement are recorded, and people start to perform together in the space created by the installation. Ingress is another location-based game, and is also where Pokemon Go's map data comes from. This game is also connecting to objects in the real world, using them as points on a map to be captured by competing factions. You can see here green versus blue on a map that is constantly shifting and changing. However, the connection to place is highly abstract. In comparison, this playable city project from 2013 called Hello Lamppost also connects to real-world objects in place, but in a completely different way. In this case, the codes on various objects in the street are used to start conversations with them. Players have a conversation with a post box, a bus stop, a piece of street furniture, and these objects respond and talk about their daily life as an object in public space. The final example is another artwork, an audio walk created by Janet Cardiff in London in 1999. It starts at the Whitechapel Art Gallery and leads the listener around a number of different streets in the area to reimagine the city. The listener is walking around as they're having a story read to them, a story that is situated in the real world that's unfolding before them, therefore implicating them in its events. What I'm really interested in when designing AR experiences is balancing screen time with urban exploration, allowing for structured play to occur through the mobile phone screen, but then alternate that with free play through urban exploration to create a mixed reality that is quite rich in experience and connection to place. Developing 64 ways of being meant challenging existing ideas about augmented reality, making something new. This is guided by an understanding of the places people play. It's an approach that is interdisciplinary, embedded and situated, and that takes advantage of qualities of play, such as its capacity to be disruptive, generative and connective in public space. The street has many different functions, but fundamentally it's about people's right to public spaces in which they can live, work and play. Cities have been attributed with many different qualities. Smart, responsive, creative, livable, slow, playable. As we look to them as systems that may evolve, largely through creative technologies or to respond to change. Play is open-ended, spontaneous and free often collaborative rather than competitive. While games are typically based around rules and structures with specific goals, usually connected to competition, our challenge is to find invitations for adults to play in public space, to create situations in which they are comfortable to experience different ways of being in the world. Guided by this approach, we set about developing a concept that would respond to the goals of the Creative State Commission to deliver groundbreaking projects that will boost Victoria's reputation as a creative state, attract tourism, and make a lasting impact on creative careers and the wider community. In response, our concept was developed via a series of workshops involving the entire creative team. The scope of the project was established and the design of the mobile app developed with key stakeholders. Experimentation with the expression of ways of being through live art was evaluated and tested, resulting in the definition of a range of possible encounters in different public spaces. This development focused on three key creative questions. Number one, what is the most effective methodology for collaboration within a creative framework of live art, game design and public art? Number two, within this framework, what creative strategies are successful in making a city playable? Number three, which people and places are suited to these experiences and how can they participate in the project? 
The result of this initial design process was a four-minute trailer that was used to pitch the project to Creative Victoria and became our main source material for developing the game design document. I'll play this for you now. The city is waiting to be opened, its layers exposed. Hi there, you have successfully entered the zone, the field, it's the world. In this world, there is not just one reality, but many. This app will help you see help you listen. The most crucial piece of technology is you, your eyes, your ears, smell, touch, taste, your mind, imagination. This device is here to augment, to add to all of these, to give you superpowers. So relax. The time is yours. The world is yours. Play. Can you hear me? I'm here. Lie beneath. Lie beneath me. Far beneath. My roots go down. Under you. Some hundred years. Some hundred years. Here. A passageway, a passageway opens up and I step silently through without my knowing. The street, the day, seem the same, but some part of me is drifting, floating even, over time and space and what I call myself. And what a moment ago seemed certain and firm becomes dream and portal. And time becomes transparent, ephemeral. It's then that I feel them with me, beneath my feet. The lives, the hopes, the dreams, the frailties. In 64 Ways of Being, Melbourne is transformed into a playable city through an inventive blend of live art, game design and public art. People and place are connected at 64 locations across the city via augmented reality encounters capturing different ways of being. These experiences reimagine Melbourne's identity as expressed through its creative, linguistic, cultural, social and urban diversity. We quickly discovered that by bringing together live art, game design and public art that we were making a monster, or to put it more poetically, a, a chimera. 
Making the project meant bringing together three different ways of thinking and working. It's an artwork, it's a game, it's a show. But ultimately it's a collaboration between one step at a time like this myself and Millipede. So who are the collaborators? One step at a time like this create participatory, locative and place responsive works, locally, nationally and internationally. Their work puts the audience member in the centre of a personalised experience by shaping and reframing the world that they find themselves in. They reframe that world in a variety of ways, through audio soundtracks and headsets, live encounters, locative mobile films, live radio broadcasts, city and natural locations, and by engaging the audience's imagination, feelings and actions as contributing elements to the overall experience of the work. Millipede is a Melbourne-based game development company with over a decade of experience in designing creative mobile applications. Millipede's work spans play-based learning apps for Australian and Victorian government organisations, chart-topping casual games with hundreds of millions of users, and gamified mobile solutions across diverse use cases and industry sectors. With a team of 20 specialist mobile development staff spanning experience design, animation, technical engineering and project management disciplines, Millipede brings game design and development expertise to the project so that the mobile game is accessible and engaging to a broad audience and pushes the boundaries of augmented reality technologies. In my own creative practice research, I develop augmented reality games that blend physical objects with digital interfaces to reimagine everyday urban environments in playful ways. I have 10 years experience in developing public art projects ranging from large scale sculptural installations to urban games that blend street art and augmented reality played in cities such as Melbourne, Hong Kong, Ogaki, Bristol, Dublin and Barcelona. My visual arts practice explores the language of digital code in works of design, sculpture, animation, sound and installation, and I have 25 years experience in gallery-based exhibitions, symposia, and site-specific projects, including participation in over 60 exhibitions. Add to this a diverse range of stakeholders and relationships that focus on the co-creation of content and co-marketing strategies linked to Arts Melbourne's Creative City Policy, Visit Victoria's networks and resources, and the State Library's collections and new spaces. They plan to host and develop our audience as a play community during project development and testing. Our project includes locations identified in the Inner Melbourne Action Plan connecting the Melbourne, Yarra, Maribyrnong, Port Phillip and Stonington City Councils. We planned workshops in consultation with these councils to reach communities and discover local knowledge and stories. All five City Councils confirmed their support. The common ground between all of their collaborators and stakeholders is an interest in place connection to place, the lived experience of the city, leading players into rich engagement with public space through experiences that are immersive and memorable. In order to achieve this, we developed some key aspects of the design that played to the strengths of the collaboration. Experiencing 64 ways of being shifts between two different modes of engagement, walking and listening, and experiencing a way of being within a particular time and place. These live encounters are situated spatially in an augmented reality street theatre environment that explores the creative potential of the platform to evoke internal emotional states. As people and place come together, they engage in a conversation with the city by following characters, activating architecture, discovering hidden worlds, playing with strangers and talking with objects like trees and rivers. Ways of being are arranged in clusters of eight, connected spatially and thematically. This diagram shows one possible arrangement of a cluster across streets and laneways. Each cluster is a chapter in the work and may be experienced in a single afternoon. Some clusters are experienced as a journey and have a beginning, middle and end. Others allow players to roam and explore more freely. All of these experiences are situated in a shared story world that responds to individual player behaviour and participation. Where they are, where they have been, and where they are going shapes their particular conversation with the city. 
64 Ways of Being is a conversation with the city about its past, present, and future. Each way of being is a live, real-time, interactive encounter that is intimate, particular, and participatory. The player being there makes a difference. The emotional cartography of the city is mapped via 64 words, from 64 languages, that describe different ways of being. Each is represented by an ideogram that connects them and appears in different public artworks, as signs and markers on the street, for example. Ultimately, it is an augmented reality platform delivering arts and cultural experiences that make the city playable. A platform for experiences of place. The shape of our game design most closely matches that of an aesthetical art game combined with a walking simulator except that you are actually walking in your own body, not that of an avatar. You are your own avatar in the game. Centred around the player is a story that shifts their relationship to place. Using the city as a material for creating ways of being and drawing people into these through the liveness of play, this story unfolds through situations and encounters in the city. Urban play often starts with familiar everyday behaviour and reframes it in relation to the world and to player experience. Walking is often seen as simply a way to get to an experience, not an experience in itself, or as fulfilling the need to exercise measured in steps through fitness trackers rather than through the experience in itself. In contrast, there is a rich history of walking practices that are instead about experiences of place. Walking presents a range of possibilities, from the political to the social. In cities literally built around car culture and increased productivity, being a pedestrian is a radical act. Slowing down, being present in the street, taking the scenic route all mean occupying public spaces in protest against cultures of consumption and accelerationism. Walking creates spaces for play by creating space for contemplation, or more overtly, through practices of urban play that draw people into imaginative relationships with their urban environment. More recently, audio walks, live art, augmented reality and alternative cartographies have expanded the range of possibilities for situating player experiences. Walking may be a guided exercise in observation, following a path or map that works with spatial narrative and environmental storytelling, it can be exploratory and procedurally generated, using random rules or decisions to create new paths and perspectives in a pre-existing urban environment. From a game design perspective, walking is a fundamental mechanic of urban play that brings players into new encounters and relations with their environment. In terms of urban design, cities range from being hostile to pedestrians to basing urban planning decisions around them through design pr principles such as the neighbourhood unit or five-minute city. Let's look at how some of these ideas are translated into the game. The 64 Ways of Being app has three roles and three layers of functionality. Number one, as a guide to the artwork, introducing the work and showing people where it is located and how it can be accessed. Number two, it provides an audio-based guided narrative experience as users move through experiences in a cluster. And number three, it provides AR functionality for ex specific experiences within each cluster. To capture the Melbourne experience of the Playable City concept, our site selection strategy covers a wide range of public spaces that the city has to offer. Laneways and waterways, malls and arcades, parks and gardens, marketplaces, docklands and maritime spaces, iconic architecture, paths, thresholds, boundaries, and public plazas. These spaces present a diverse range of opportunities for situating play with, within the AR platform and capture a range of experiences of the distinct culture, history, and urban character of Inner Melbourne. The intersection between the ways of being articulated via AR experiences and this diverse approach to site selection responds to our goal to explore Melbourne's identity through its creative, linguistic, cultural and urban diversity. Identifying these sites meant exploring and mapping the city itself with the process of building the story world involving days spent walking across multiple sites. 
Ultimately, we landed upon the steps of Parliament as the starting point for the Melbourne chapter, both as a vantage point looking into the city from the edge, and through its symbolism as a site of sovereign power, as well as a site of Indigenous gatherings for thousands of years prior. Different laneways were explored and evaluated for their suitability for situating experiences, with a preference for closed spaces, where possible, that were inaccessible to cars. Each location, once established, was mapped and measured. Music is played underneath the voice track to set the mood and sometimes the pace of movement through different spaces. Some locations suggest slowing down to explore and con contemplate, such as this one, while others bring players into the flow of the city, increasing the pace. The process of selecting music is similar to that used in a film soundtrack. Compositions by Melbourne musicians are selected for their relationship to place, to capture the mood of each location. Prototyping and design happened in situ using concept art and test tracks. Multiple mixes of content were created and then played while walking to test their mapping to place. Walking the same path multiple times, set to different narrative and music, was essential in testing the experience, each time playing the game level from start to finish to evaluate the type of story world it created. These experiences allow players to see Melbourne through new eyes, whether they live or work in the city, are visiting for the first time, or exploring the city again, the app offers a fresh perspective as they walk about led on a particular path through the city. 64 Ways of Being is situated on the lands of the Woiwurrung and Boonwurrung people of the Kulin Nation. The Wurundjeri Tribe Council and Boonwurrung Foundation have been engaged in cultural consultation on the project since its inception. This also led to reflection on the game design itself, seeking points of connection between Indigenous knowledge and ways of being in the world. In particular, walks through the Melbourne CBD led by Naui Carolyn Briggs led to new understandings of place. Biik is a word for land or place, but also for being on that place, for being on country. In Indigenous ways of being, there is no separation of land as an abstract concept disconnected from lived experience, it is always connected to living beings, including people. Play is not separate from everyday life, but embedded within it, situated in relation to space and place, connected to multiple layers, and to others who may move between different ways of being and play. Spatially, indigenous pervasive games may draw upon a rich pre-digital culture connecting story and place, including design solutions that use music, voice, and visual language in sophisticated mappings of space that are at once performed through individual experience of place and the environment in which they are situated through the activation of meaning in, embedded in the landscape itself. In an urban environment, this landscape is multi-layered, consisting of the built environment, semi-permanent landmarks, transient traces, past evocations of place, and situated storytelling. This approach to urban play shifts the ways that the game is mapped spatially away from a set of discrete GPS coordinates on a Cartesian grid to a map that shifts in scale and intensity of experience, and as a result, the logic of the game map is configured in a more organic, non-linear way. Shifts also occur temporarily. Firstly, as stories are situated in a tradition of oral storytelling that is often circular, shifting between past, present and future as the narrative context shifts. The experience of the game is not only what is happening now as the player listens to a story, moves from one place to the next, or scans a marker that extends and transforms reality itself, but also the ways in which it resonates across different time frames. This includes these moments, but also the ways in which Indigenous ways of connecting people and place create resonant layers of meaning that form a temporal landscape on which more transient moments of interaction may be situated. The different pace results in a slow intensity characteristic of Indigenous ways of being in the world, originating in a recognition that everything is alive, moving and being at its own pace. In relation to urban play, these temporal shifts also express a new logic, 
being simultaneously in a single moment of interaction and within the collective strata of multiple timelines happening in the world in which the game is being played. Socially, a different set of relations are also in play. As the predominant logic of the design is cultural, the player is situated in relation to place, community, story, and other players. This connects to the potential of pervasive games to connect and situate people in new ways, and to express social frameworks connecting people and place. First and foremost is the cultural significance of Indigenous knowledges of place, and the importance of exploring these knowledges in processes of reconciliation and decolonizing place and practice. However, Indigenous knowledges of place are not only culturally significant, but they are rich in opportunities for urban play, expressive of the cultural and social value of play. Often the goal of urban play is to create meaningful connection of people and place. Expressing social networks that are embedded in space and time is an effective way to achieve this goal. In the Melbourne chapter of the game, three indigenous words describe three ways of being. Wabanjika, welcome, what is your purpose? Biik, a word for land and also being on country, a way of being connected to the world. Dumbo, a commitment made to place, recognising a respectful way of being in the world. Without giving away any spoilers on the experience itself, environmental history, what Melbourne once was before colonisation, became a major theme of the Melbourne chapter, as it was so closely connected to our shared experiences of place. In situating experiences of place, the game leads players into ways of being in the world. Different approaches are used to bring players into different ways of being that are connected to the themes of creative, linguistic, cultural, social and urban diversity. Overall, these approaches are connected to three design pillars. Urban play, the player as performer, creating a form of participatory AR street theatre. Ways of being, multiple languages, emotions and points of connection on the game map. And the city and the city. AR is a form of superpower, allowing the player to discover hidden layers of the city. A research study informed the development process that involved engagement with Melbourne's diverse communities to collect words from languages other than English, and then interview participants about the meaning and usage of those words. This research raised a number of questions. Do languages shape how we experience the world? Or could certain words shape how we experience and see the world? Each experience is based around a word or way of being in another language that doesn't have a direct translation into English. These words are often referred to as being untranslatable, even though they can in fact be translated. But the difference is that there's no direct English equivalent of the word. This language research is ongoing. If you or someone you know has an untranslatable word from a language other than English that may be part of the game, submit it via one of these links. In the game, these ways of being are situated across multiple layers. In the mood set by the audio walk, the atmosphere of place, the design of the AR encounters, and the cultural meaning embedded in language. This means that the design process is led by different elements each time, including play, the design of an AR experience and what it asks of the player may establish a way of being, or language, in some cases the meaning embedded in a particular word may dominate and lead the creation of a way of being, or perhaps mood, in other situations the aesthetics and overall mood of an experience may be the main factor in setting the way of being, or in some cases place, in many locations, the environment itself is so evocative that it is central to the way of being that is experienced by the player. Overall, the result is play experiences that explore a wider emotional bandwidth within the city. Urban play becomes a platform for a diverse range of experiences and emotions, different ways of being in the world. To test these ideas, we developed the first stage of the Melbourne CBD journey to explore ideas around code, portals, entities, and flow. Bringing together the diverse approaches and expertise in the team meant working both on location and in the studio. 
Templates were developed that responded to the different aspects of the ways of being, with each having criteria around place and play, and options for customization in response to language and mood. Working with templates was also a strategy to balance scalability and creativity, so that it was possible to create 64 different experiences, but to also efficiently use the development time we had available. Using this methodology, we built the first three AR encounters, linked with audio walks, and opened up for playtesting over summer. The first of these is a walk through portal. The core of this encounter is stepping into another world and returning with something from that world. This encounter type works best where there is ample space for the player to move around, such as a long, empty laneway. The player spawns a doorway and moves through it to be enclosed in an immersive world and is directed to walk slowly through the space. The design of this encounter is really driven by play. Apart from the immersive experience and testing of a spatial sound environment to support this, the encounter also tested different processes of finding a ground plane and orientating the player to start at the right point along the laneway. As the AR encounters are situated in relation to objects in public space, the final part of the audio track the player was listening to managed the transition from listening to playing by keying, in, keying the player into objects within the laneway itself. When they arrive, the player slows down, becomes more observant, before opening the portal to another world and being initiated into the game. This is how last summer's build played out. Walk slowly to the far end of the passage. encounter is more open, a sand pit. The focus of this encounter is movement linked to the unfolding of a world that is blended with the location. This encounter should be placed in a flat open area, giving the player enough room to move around freely. The player is led to the centre of the space and then spawns the starting point of the world, from which a number of flying creatures emerge and begin moving about the space. Again, the audio track leading into this location creates a transition between walking and playing through an act of observation. The location in this case is not an empty laneway, but a public square in Chinatown that is entered through a large gate. The voice track situates the player within layers of cultural meaning by describing dragons and other features before play begins. The design of this encounter is really driven by place. During play, the soundtrack is again spatial, and while the previous encounter was quiet and contemplative, this experience is more active, drawing the player out into more active engagement with public space. Here is some footage of the first build of this encounter to give you a sense of the experience. Move your phone around you to bring a world into being. Movement will unfold a world into being.
third encounter is with a character. We felt that in this first part of their journey, the player should have a companion to travel with, a point of connection between the city and the game world situated within. The key action in this encounter is following this character across a series of locations. This template works best when there is a clear path to follow through the location, like a long closed laneway for example, which is what we explored in this test, but it also works in more open spaces. There is a fair degree of flexibility. The experience alternates between moments of listening and observation, alternating with following the character, each time opening up a new part of the character and the player's story. In this way, the encounter is really driven by the mood set by the content, the design of the character, sound of its voice, how it addresses the player, and so on. The player and the character are bound to one another through the experience. In this test, we explored the idea of the character relying on the player to hold their form in the world, and the player relying on the character to lead them to the next location in the game. This short excerpt of the experience will give you an idea of how this experience works. Hello there. It's me. I'm here to see you. I hope I didn't disappoint you. You see? I can only be generated by code. So forgive my form. My form. I mean, my... I mean, my mouth. I mean, the mouth that I don't have. I'd rather be anything you want me to be, if that's what you want to. So think of me as a standing anything. Playing together on location quickly became a critical part of development through the formation of a shared language across live art, game design and public art, with both creative and technical decisions being made in the field. With the closing of public spaces during lockdown this year, development has slowed down as the number of times we could all go out and play were severely limited. However, we had collected a lot of feedback over summer and were able to put this into action when working from home. A large part of this came via the shared language that emerged through fieldwork, connecting all of the elements in the game – animation, writing, play, sound, location, image – so that they are in conversation with each other and with the project themes. A balance needed to be found between multiplicity, a key feature of the experience, and the player's journey, a way of holding them within that experience. Each way of being is a rich experience in itself, established by the voice track leading the player into it and the mood set by the music. The player is situated in these ways of being, they are their own avatar. The mobile phone screen a window into another world, the city in the city. Again, the multiplicity that comes out of these layers of experience is rich and speaks to the core motivation of the game to open up the city to the player's imagination, locating them in a process of aesthetic transformation. But the individual encounters also need to hold together as a journey. In discussion on this earlier this year following the summer playtest, we arrived at emotional cartography a key concept in the work from the beginning, as the structural element to hold the work together in this way. Fundamentally, emotional cartography is a map of experience. In this case, the player's experience as they move from one place to the next, as they travel through the game. This concept art shows how the Melbourne CBD journey is mapped out over a large space with key themes and actions for the player identified across three acts or parts of their journey. The three test encounters that I just shared formed the first act, setting the scene. The player then moves into an arcade space in the middle of the city, somewhat like a labyrinth where they engage with the game world more actively and begin to unlock its flows. Finally, there is a resolution in the last part of their journey in a completely different urban environment. You'll have to play the game to find out what that is. In this way, a diverse range of experiences are linked via the player's journey. 
To return to one of the key ideas of the design, each way of being is a live, real-time, interactive encounter that is intimate, particular and participatory. The player being there makes a difference. The transformation of the player happens not through their avatar, but through themselves, their ways of being in the world, and memories of place. This was ultimately the guiding principle of the design of an aesthetic art game blended with a walking simulator, where you are walking in your own body, you are your own avatar. It is a curated journey, a playable art walk, that works with the city as a material, bringing it into sharper focus through augmented reality, leading you through 64 ways of being. So right now we're working towards launching the app in late 2020. Uh, and, uh, you know, when we can all go out and play again. Um, but leading up to that, there's a pre-launch release uh, starting Monday, October 26, when we expect that some restrictions, particularly the five kilometer uh, uh, radius uh, limiting movement will be lifted. And um, we're going to be play testing 64 ways of being in the streets of Melbourne uh, for about a week uh, from Monday, October 26th. So if you'd like to be part of that play test uh, to try this out, um, give us uh, some feedback on the experience, um, please get in touch either via our website, 64waysofbeing.com, um, or you can contact me directly at troy.innocent at gmail.com. Uh, We'd really love to hear from you and get your feedback on the experience of 64 Ways of Being. Thanks for listening.